Hello YouTube, how are we doing today? It is Saturday, March 19th, and the Japan situation continues. Well, it seems as though that they can't get a resolution to what's going on. They can't seem to stop the meltdown. They can't seem to get an answer as to how they can shut the plants down in a safe manner and stop the radiation from leaking out. Now the radiation in Japan obviously is a lot worse than that that's reaching Alaska, Canada and the mainland United States and possibly even Mexico. So let's take a look at that point right now. And this is from the New York Times, the Asia Pacific market. And it says right here, Japan finds contaminated food up to 90 miles away from the epicenter of the nuclear sites. Now that's not good news, but we kind of knew that was going to happen anyway. It says, and this is from Tokyo, it says the government said Saturday that it had found higher than normal levels of radioactive materials in spinach, milk, and it farms up to 90 miles away from the ravaged nuclear power plants. The first confirmation of officials that the unfolding nuclear crisis has affected the nation's food supply. Now, what does this mean for the rest of the world? It probably means that there's going to be a food shortage, and I've made several videos about that already, the food shortage that's coming up. And I just want people to understand, you know, just just how severe this problem really is. This is a major, major deal. Again, you know, this isn't a surprise. But let's continue on. Let's focus here on a resolution, okay? Here it says, Japan raises nuclear threat level. Ways need to bury plant. Now, ways mean like, in, you know, it weighs the idea of burying the plant, okay? Now, again, this article which came out yesterday, continues to talk about how Japan raised the the threat level from 4 to 5, which in my last video, in a video I made a while back, this level has already been at 6 by many, many other nuclear scientists and countries have, have way raised the, the, the warning level about this. And, and it just seems that Japan is just dragging their feet. Okay, And here it says right here, it says, Japanese engineers conceded on Friday that burying a crippled nuclear plant in the sand and concrete may be the last resort to prevent, to prevent a catastrophic radiation release. This method used to seek huge leakages from Chernobyl in 1986. That sounds all fine and dandy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And see this guy here from Japan, you know, he's crying, he's upset. Okay, Japan is on the uh, brink of, of just total collapse with their people and it's really going really getting cut over there but anyway let's think about this burying this reactor in the sand okay now let's look back at Chernobyl Japan nuclear crisis scientists considering burying Fukushima in a Chernobyl sarcophagus okay now what a sarcophagus is it's like a coffin in, 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 in a sense okay but did that really work in Chernobyl? Did it did it work as to you know burying the nuclear reactor stuff? Because just because they bury it doesn't mean the radiation stops. It doesn't mean that the meltdown stops. And here and here it is too. Okay, and, and I'm starting from right here. Right here. Oh, I don't like when it does that right here okay it says at Chernobyl authorities literally and in quotes it says threw everything at the reactor to try to cool it down including lead boric acid and liquid nitrogen when they finally extinguished the fires an army of worker conscripted by the Soviet government buried the reactor in thousands of tons of sand then threw together a concrete container known as a sarcophagus despite costing hundreds of millions of pounds, the sarcophagus is already falling apart and fears are growing that it is leaking radiation again. Okay? So, 
they did this with Chernobyl, all right, and now the fear is, is that the radiation is beginning to leak again out of Chernobyl. And they built this concrete and sand sarcophagus around Chernobyl, and now it looks like they may have to revisit Chernobyl to resolve that problem. This is not good, people. This is not good at all. Uh, well, Elliot, I think there's an increasing credibility gap uh, in, in terms of what the, the Japanese government is saying and, and the way people are interpreting it. I mean, I think uh, everyone I've talked to here, I, I haven't met anyone who really has faith in the public statements that are being made by the Japanese government uh, because in truth it seems that the Japanese government is getting their information from this private company which is still in charge uh, of the operation. Um, you know, people complained during the BP oil spill that, that BP was running too much of the show and the U.S. government kept saying, no, you know, we're the ones in charge. Um, that, that, you know, there was, there was uh, though there wasn't enough transparency in that situation, there was some transparency. In this situation, there is, is virtually no transparency. Everybody is dependent, it seems, on these statements, on whatever information is being put out by the private Japanese company. And we know from their track record, they have a history of, mis of misleading the public. So it, it's of great concern. I think as I, I think all of this is compounded by now the statements by U.S. officials, which seem to be very frank statements. And, and I think people, frankly, appreciate the frankness because in an emergency situation like this, the last thing you want is to not have credibility, to not believe the statements which are being made uh, by the authorities. And I think there's a lot of people, especially in Tokyo, you know, when you go up to the northeast, which are the tsunami-affected areas, uh, people are, are trying to figure out where to get food, where to get water. Uh, you know, they're in homeless shelters. They may not be as focused on this issue, but people here in Tokyo, where there is no tsunami damage, are, are, are focused uh, constantly uh, on, on what is happening up uh, in the Fukushima plant. So it's very worrying, um, very worrying, especially when you consider now the statements made by U.S. officials. You know, Anderson, you're so right. This sort of tension between the, the, the clarity with which the chairman of the NRC, our highest nuclear regulatory co fellow, said this is dangerous. The, here's the situation and the sort of vagueness and obscurity that we keep hearing right. from the Japanese officials. And when I asked Mr. Shikado, who's the spokesman for the prime minister of Japan, and we'll play this in just a couple moments, I said, how do you square these? They had no answer. They, they, there is simply this complete disconnect so well, I, how's the public there dealing with this I, yeah i gotta tell you i saw an interview that 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 man did the spokesman for the prime minister did on cnn international a couple hours ago and i can't wait to see the interview that you did with him because the interview he did on cnn international he was talking but he was not saying anything and i literally as a viewer uh, i'm sitting there watching wanting to throw something at the screen because in a situation like this everybody wants information and 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 granted it's a fast-moving situation it's not clear well, you know, what the condition of some of these rods is. It's not clear exactly what's going on in the plant, but you at least want somebody to say, you know what, it's not clear, uh, as opposed to kind of saying, well, we're all working together and, and uh, you know, we're, we're endeavoring to uh, rectify the situation. I mean, things which just are words but don't really have much meaning. It's also frustrating, I think, uh, a lot of people probably considered earlier in the last couple of days that the IAEA was somehow on site or at least monitoring or overseeing from here uh, we, we've learned now, of course, in the last 24 hours, uh, the IAEA does not have a presence here. Now, the, the head of the I, IAEA is talking about coming in perhaps today, uh, but it would just be a one-day visit uh, from what I've read of his statements. A and, you know, there's the information they're getting just seems to be getting the information from the Japanese government, which is getting the information from this private company. So even you have the, the energy secretary uh, saying that, that they are not receiving enough information uh, from, uh, from their Japanese counterparts, and that's very worrying uh, and incredibly frustrating.